This video will demonstrate creating a density surface using a kernel density estimation in QGIS. The data being used for this demonstration is point data of initial tornado touchdown points in Caddo County, Oklahoma. You'll also see I have a, a base map here as well to, to help provide some geographic context for this point data. Now, density surfaces help us visualize patterns in spatial data by showing concentration of point features. And in doing so, these point features are smoothed or spread over the surrounding area with a raster as the resulting output. And such an output may also be referred to as a heat map. So in order to do this, first we want to open up the processing algorithm called heat map kernel density estimation. We can either look it up by name by typing in either heat map or starting to type in kernel density estimation uh, in, the pro in the search box in the processing toolbox, or we can find it by expanding interpolation and we can double click and, and open this up. In terms of parameters, first, we want to make sure that we have the correct point layer selected. So we have our tornado uh, point layer selected, so we're good to go with that. The next parameter here is radius, and the radius establishes a distance from each point in which that point's going to be used to calculate density. So what, what this means is that a larger search radius provides a more generalized density raster with greater smoothing, while a smaller search radius tends to produce a density raster with more detail. And we tend to want to look for a balancing of the two. We want to see a, a smooth surface while at the same time providing enough detail. And to the right, we can also see uh, that we can specify units for the radius value. So we want to make sure that we use the same units as that of the coordinate reference system for this layer. So uh, if we just open up properties then for our point layer, and take a look at the source. This is uh, projected in a state plane coordinate system. We can see that uh, the units are feet. So uh, we want to make sure that we keep this as feet here when we, uh, for the units for the, the radius. I'm going to set the radius to 25,000 feet. And then the next parameter we look at is our output raster size. And this is a key parameter to be aware of because the value that we specify for the output cell size is going to determine how kind of smooth the output raster will appear. Meaning the higher an output cell size, the more coarse that output raster will appear. So the units for output cell size are also based on the coordinate reference system. In this case, it's, it's feet. So I'm going to set the, the pixel size or cell size to 500 feet. Now notice when I did so that the number of rows and columns in the resulting raster automatically update with the change in the pixel size. So we can leave the other parameters as is. And we want to scroll down and make sure that we save our output here. So we'll go to save as file. And I'm going to call this uh, density 25,000 and click save. And then we can go ahead and click run. And I will close this dialog box. We can see this output. Um, I'm going to change the symbology on this to help us make better sense of this output. So I'm going to go to, to properties. I'm going to reduce the uh, transparency down to 70%, but I really want to uh, update this symbology here. And I'm going to go with uh, an orange to red color ramp here and apply that. And we can take a look at the output here on the map. And 
with this color ramp, this light orange to red, we can see that the density increases as we move from light orange to red. And what this means is that as the oranges darken and we get into reds, what that means, it indicates a, a greater predicted density of tornado touchdown points. Now, ahead of time, I had also created kernel density estimation for this same data with a 10,000 foot radius and also a 100,000 foot radius to illustrate the differences in radius values. So I'm going to turn off the uh, 20, 25,000 uh, foot radius layer and turn on the 10,000. And so, uh, and, and actually I'm going to turn off the base map so we can better see this. Um, so what we see here is with a 10,000 foot radius, it looks like it's going to be too small. We don't see uh, much smoothing of uh, this point data across the surface. We don't see a spread. Uh, it's, it's primarily kind of concentrated around the points themselves. Now I'm going to turn off the, um, that layer and turn on the one with the 100,000 foot radius and what we see here is we almost see that it's too spread out across the surface um, we, we lose some of that fine detail some of those um, might call them hot spots and it appears a little bit washed out um, so hopefully with these two other examples we can see the importance of specifying an appropriate radius when we do a kernel density estimation in QGIS.